Hey guys, today I'm here at the phone. I'm over at the library hall. And the first book I have to show you is Sky by Neil Schuster. What if death was the only thing left to control in a perfect world? The only way to die is to be gleaned by professional Sky. When Citra and Rowan are chosen to be a friend to Sky, so they have not. They know they have no option but to learn the art of killing. However, the terrifying responsibility of choosing their victims is just a start. Corruption is the order of the day and Citra and Rona need to stick together to fit it. Then they are told that one of them will have to glean the other. So yeah, I am looking forward to reading this but and this is just when it is Robin Hobbs, um, Assassin's Apprentice. This is the first book in the Fraser trilogy. I'm just going to read you the back. The Kingdom of the Six Duchies is on the brink of civil war when news breaks that the Crown Prince is father the bastard son and is shammed into abdication. The child's name is Fitz and he is despised. Raised in the castle stables, only the company of the King's school, the ragged king children of the lower city and his unusual affinity with animals provide Fitz with any comfort. To be useful to the crown, Fitz is trained as an assassin. And to use, and to use the traditional logic of the Fraser family, but his to ally to another political faction is determined to discredit, even kill him. Fitz must survive, for he may be dis- destined to save the kingdom. And then I got the first two books in the... Um... Common Strike series by J. F. Rowling, otherwise known as Robert Gilbert. And the first one is The Cuckoo's Calling, and the second one is The Silk One. I will obviously read you the synopsis of the first. When a troubled model falls to her death from a snow covered Mayfair balcony, it is assumed that she is committed suicide. However, her brother has his doubts and calls in to have investigated Common Strike to look into the case. Strike is a war veteran, willing to both physically and psychologically, and his life is in desire. This The case gives him a financial lifeline, but it comes at a personal cost. The more he delves into the young model's world, the darker things get, and the closer he gets to trouble. And yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this. Because I watched the TV show and I loved it, so I can't wait to read the book. Oh, that's a different case, the silk one. But I don't want, obviously, I don't want it to see so I don't want to. Wait, there's another one. So I'm gonna have the views. Every, every book I read, I'm gonna have the views up. Anyway, and then I have picked up two books from Dean Coots. I haven't heard a lot about him, I just picked them up as I was off past the shelf. First, because I'm gonna get into thrillers, and it is known as the num is a classic number one bestseller on the thriller list. Or she is. Is it a boy? I don't even know if it's a man or a woman. Um. Well, yeah, I'll just read you the back of this one. This is the bad place. Um, Frank Pollard awakens in an alley knowing nothing but his name and that he's in danger. Over the next few days, he develops a fear of sleep because when he wakes up, he finds blood on his hands and bizarre and terrifying objects in his pockets. When distraught and desperate Frank begs husband and wife to to see him, Bobby and Julie Doctor to get a feel back from his mysterious animi- animatic burgers, it seems a simple job, but they are drawn into ever darkening moms and they can count in the nightmare hit, nightmare hit for a figure still stalking Frank. And then lies are threatened is that of Julie's gentle Down syndrome brother Thomas. But Thomas's death is a bad place, from which there is no return. But as each of them ultimately learns, there are equal bad places in the world of the living, places so steeped in evil that in contrast, death seems almost to be a relief. And then the other book I got from Dean's Coots is Ashley Bell. This is a tome of a book, so if that end it, I'll probably end up being F in it. If I don't like it. B 
Who do you believe like, with the fiercest money I don't see a woman whose doctor says she has one year to live? She replies, we'll see. Her sudden recovery is a medical miracle. An energetic woman convinces Bibi that she escaped death so that she can save someone else. Someone named Ashley Bell, but who is Ashley Bell and what exactly does she need saving from? Bibi's obsession with finding Ashley sends her on the run from threats both mystical and worldly, including a rich and charismatic cult leader with terrifying ambitions. So this sounds interesting. And I'll have reviews of them up if I like them. And and then I had a I got Dear Victoria by Daisy Goodwin. In June I do not care for the name Alexandria. Now that I am queen I have decided I shall call myself by my middle name, Victoria. It is my own. In June that eighteen thirty seven, the eighteen year old Victoria wakes up to find that she is queen of the most powerful nation in the world. But will she be queen in her own right or is a puppet controlled by her mother and the sinister Sir John Connery? Can this tiny girl prevail against the man like her uncle, the Duke of Cumberland, who believes that women are too hysterical to, ru- hysterical to rule? Everyone wants her to get married, but Victoria has no intention of entering into a marriage of convenience with her cousin Albert. A shy bookworm who didn't know how to dance the last time she met him. She would much rather reign alone with a little help from her, from her Prime Minister Lord, Melbourne, who may be old enough to be her father, but he's the only man who believes that she'll be a great queen, and he knows how to make her laugh, or husband would only get in the way. So yeah, there are the seven books I got from the library, and obviously I'll have reviews of those up soon. So yeah, thank you guys, and see you in the next video.